all the all the evidence suggests um, and the polling suggests that the majority of Palestinians actually want the death of Israelis and they want Israel gone. What Israel is fighting actually is Iran at the moment through its pro proxy, uh, Hamas. But um, this idea that the Middle East conflict, insofar as it is between Israel and the Palestinians, the idea that that is about the division of land is simply wrong. This is the illusion that the West has pursued for decades. It is not about the division of land. If it was about the division of land, a state of Palestine living next to a state of Israel, it would have been solved in the 1930s. It would have been solved every single time this state of Palestine has been offered to them. But they have turned it down because they make it absolutely clear, something that the British media very, very rarely, in fact, never talks about. Their... Uh, uh, aim, and I'm not talking about the Hamas, I'm talking about the Palestinian leadership, the Palestinian authority led by Mahmoud Abbas. Their aim is the destruction of Israel. They say so. They say so in Arabic. They say so in their insignia and maps, which if you look at what the state of Palestine would look like, it is Israel. It is not these disputed territories. You can see it in their educational materials in which they teach their children this is the Palestinian Authority. They teach their children that their highest calling in life is to murder Jews and steal all their land, to take Jaffa, Tel Aviv, Haifa. These are Israeli cities. They want the lot. And they say so. They also say it's holy war, that Israel is intent on destroying the Al-Aqsa Mosque. This lie has ignited Islamic jihadi hysteria since the 1920s. It is a total lie. So there's no hope? There is no hope as long as the West continues to fund, legitimise, sanitise and incentivise the genocidal attack on the Jewish people in the state of Israel. That's what? what's kept this, this, this terrible war going. If the West were to suddenly turn on a dime and say, you know what, we've got this wrong. Actually, we now see this for what it is and withdraw funding and support from this Palestine cause. It would go. I can't tell you how it would look like, you know, what the ultimate, um, uh, uh, the, the, uh, what the land would look like as, as a result. I do know yeah. that Jordan and Egypt would be part of, of this, of this final uh, arrangement. I can't tell you what it would look like, but the war would, would end. The war is being kept going by the West's incentivization and funding of an unconscionable agenda, which the West tells itself is something completely different. Giles, do you want to say something? I only want to say, and I don't want to argue with Melanie, and I don't want to argue with anyone about this, but just looking at the thing that Melanie just said about where the problem lies and what we do. And you asked that question, I think great question, Sting, you know, is there no hope? And that's what we want to hear, particularly from someone deeply entrenched and passionate like Melanie on a, and into a particular cause. We are hiding what well, that people like me are going, oh, it's not the it's not uh, Israel, it's, it's not it's not Palestine, it's Hamas, it's all about Hamas. Hamas are doing this, they're a death cult at the beginning. I, when, when all my friends go, cease fire now, cease fire now, I go, what about calling for, for, for Hamas to lay down their arms? Hamas lay down their arms and walk out with their hands up, it ends tomorrow and not another child dies. I've been telling myself that Melanie is saying the problem is not Hamas, it's the Palestinians. All of them have all brought up and ingrained to want to want the death of uh, of Jews and to have the whole of Israel. Now, if that is the case, I don't really see how withdrawing funding from missions to them can really help. Where is the hope? If the problem, as Melanie says, is genuinely it's Palestine, they will never cease until they've killed every Jew and have uh, and have the whole area to themselves, regardless of who's in charge. Then where's that? And we have spoken to Palestinians very clearly who support the notion of a, of a, of a two state solution. There are, of course, there are Palestinians who support it. There are, there are Palestinians uh, in Gaza, I'm sure, uh, and certainly in the disputed territories, who want nothing more than everybody wants. You and I want. They want to live in peace, to look after their families, to have work, um, and and not to be frightened of their of their loved ones dying. We all want that, and there are people who do that. But unfortunately, all the all the evidence suggests. Um, and the polling suggests that the majority of Palestinians actually want the death of Israelis and they want Israel gone. 
I mean, I th- I, I, President Abbas was, was asked this question about, do you recognise the state of Israel a couple of days ago? And he said very clearly he does. Well, of course he recognises the state of Israel. But what he means by you, that you is he recognises the he reality. Doesn't. No, he recognises the reality of it. But he doesn't actually want it to exist. Well, he says, his, his comments are, I recognise the state of Israel and its right to exist and have done for 40 years. I in turn ask Israel to recognise a Palestinian state and its right to exist. Yes, and what and it, it is a lie because you only have to look at the maps and insignia that he promotes. What is his state of Palestine? It is the whole of Israel. What are his people telling the, their children to take Israel away from the Jews and to kill Jews. That's what he's telling his children. This is a man, Mahmoud Abbas, whose hero, he tells us, his hero, the man by whom he sets, he sets his, his life, the Lode Star, is the former Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Haj Amin al-Husseini, who told Hitler that when Hitler won the war, if Hitler won the war, he, the Mufti of Jerusalem, would annihilate, would murder every Jew in the Middle East. That is Mahmoud Abbas's hero. So, you know, you're dealing with somebody who is profoundly anti-Jew, profoundly anti-Semitic, whose entire program consists of corralling his own people to that end of the destruction of Israel, the hatred and murder of Jews. So, of course, he tells people in English... I recognise Israel and so on. He'll, he'll say anything. So the Prime Minister shouldn't be engaging with him? I think that the Western leaders, Western leaders should make it clear, which th- they won't do this because they themselves don't believe this, because they themselves don't know the history or they turn away from it and they, they choose not to see it. But it's, it's I mean, I heard what, 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 what Giles said, um, but I, I, it is my, my strong belief that... It's not simply a matter of of um, sort of being nice to leaders or taking you know be, being being stern to them. The Palestinian cause depends among uh, 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 depends almost exclusively on Western support. The Palestinian cause has no support in the Arab world. None. None of them wants the Palestinians. None of them supports the cause. They're very happy for it to continue. So Iran wants it just to make trouble. Iran wants the destruction of Israel and every Jew in the world as a pre- not as a prelude as part of the war against the West that it has been mounting since the regime came to power and against which to my as- continued astonishment neither Britain America nor Europe or put Europe to one side it doesn't ever do war anyway but neither Britain nor America has ever responded properly to the multiple attacks on Western interests made by Iran. Yeah, and uh, Egypt, as we know, has a, uh, as a, as a president who is uh, in argument with Hamas because it's their connected to the Muslim Brotherhood who he, who he overthrew. Exactly. Uh, Egypt is, you know, e- Egypt is, is kind of the mothership of the Muslim Brotherhood and is deeply, deeply entrenched, deeply uh, associated with it. And uh, President Sisi, as you say, came to power by getting rid of the Muslim Brotherhood president, and he is deeply threatened by them. Jordan is deeply threatened. Th- these, these, th- these regimes in the Arab world are deeply threatened by Islamic supremacism, uh, extremism, and so on, even though they themselves, as countries, gave birth to it. It's, it is very complicated. Yeah. But my, my overall point is that this terrible war... <laughs> in Israel, between war, Israel and the Palestinians, is kept going by the fact that the West has continuously legitimised yeah, yeah. the Palestinian cause 